Good afternoon, and uh, welcome back yet again. Uh, real simple, I mean, you guys could probably, you guys and girls could probably guess what we're cooking today. I'm gonna do a meatloaf. Just real quick, I'm gonna go over the ingredients uh, we have in front of us, and then uh, I will probably show you how I kind of put this together uh, in real time mode. Um, I don't know if I ever, yeah, we're just gonna do it. But uh, we got three pounds of fresh ground beef here. This is 9010, uh, right from the butcher. Uh, we got uh, one thing of these uh, Hormel real bacon pieces. Um, I could have fried up bacon myself, but uh, I didn't feel like it. In this bag is about a pack and a half of Ritz crackers, crumpled up, you know, crushed up pretty good. It takes the place of like the breadcrumbs and the binder. Uh, we have two eggs, and then uh, we have a well, one medium onion and one medium green pepper. Uh, so real easy to get this stuff already. So again, this is really easy. Uh, the first thing I like to do is just kind of sort of plop the ground beef in there, just like that. Uh, second thing I like to do is take the bacon, you don't have to do this. Uh, meatloaves for me, uh, they tend to be pretty dang close to the same every time, but I usually do about half one of these jars. Uh, and these are pretty good too. These aren't like your normal, um, you know, it says, you know, real bacon pieces. You know, it's not like your hard bacon bits. These are pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and dump in the onion and green pepper. Dump in the, the cracker crumbs. And then uh, we got two eggs there. And to the top of that, we're going to throw some seasoning in it. Um, I'm going to use the uh, Suckle Busters uh, Best in Texas, Texas Brisket Rub. been using this stuff pretty much on everything. Um, been using it on steaks, been using it on briskets, uh, used it on chicken, uh, and now we're using it in a meatloaf. Uh, i got four or five different kinds of Suckle Busters, and this one by far is my favorite. So we're going to go ahead, and I'm not going to measure this out, but uh, you guys can kind of get the gist of it. That'll be about good for now because I'm going to put a coat of this on uh, when I mix this all up. Oh, and then one other thing too. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of uh, barbecue sauce right in with it. Let's just go ahead and mix this stuff all up. Okay. Now what I like to do uh, before I form this into a loaf, I kind of just like to push this all together in the bottom of the bowl. You can see that or not. Thank you. But I uh, kind of like to just kind of compact it a little bit. So I will uh, probably pick back up uh, and give you a shot of this one more time before I throw it on the grill. So we'll see you then. Alrighty, uh, I apologize, I did not show you it before I throw it on the grill, but I just threw the meatloaf on, but before I give you a look at that, um, just one other mod I did to this, this is the uh, little tool hanger here, I don't know if you can see it, eh, kind of, sort of, but uh, what this is, is um, it's just a Weber kettle thing, you know, it's supposed to be on the kettle, but I was able to straighten it out, it hangs right in there, and now I have spots to hang my grilling tools. Uh, we're going to be running, check that Mad Horse BBQ logo out, <laughs> sorry, but uh, we're going to be running at 225 today. Uh, this thing smokes plenty good at 225, but uh, there is the meatloaf. It's looking pretty loafy. Uh, you know, I did make it into a loaf. Uh, one thing too, like I really do a, like, when I do my loaves, I really press them together really good. That way it'll avoid like it splitting. You know, I've had these before where if you don't press them together enough, it kind of splits, you know, when you're cooking it. So hopefully it won't do that. But uh, before I did throw it on, I did put a coat of that Suckle Busters uh, Texas brisket rub on. So uh, yeah, running at 225 and uh, probably, pick up in a couple hours or so. Alrighty, so we are back. We've been on for about two hours. Uh, internal temp right now on a meatloaf is about 115. I'll give you a quick peek there. Uh, you can kind of see it kind of flattens out. That's what these do. So, I mean, if you're first time doing it on a grill, uh, you'll notice that when you do this, it'll kind of flatten out um, when it first starts cooking. But then when it starts to get closer to that done time, it'll kind of like shrink and compress back together. But uh, there it is, looking pretty good. Uh, I did just, uh, Excuse me, but I did just spray this down with a little mixture here, some apple cider vinegar and some water. I've never sprayed a meatloaf, so I'm just going to go ahead and spray this one more time. This is probably going to be on the grill at least for another two hours. And uh, yeah, uh, I do want to have some uh, potatoes. You can see some stuff over here on the side, and I want to cook them on here. And there's just there's no room, but uh, I got this cool little uh, expanded metal piece right here, and uh, this grill obviously my dad gave me. And for those of you that know Tom Horseman's YouTube channel. He is pretty much the king of uh, modifying grills. So he put in a couple racks there, and uh, I will be able to just take this, potatoes, put them right over there. I'm going to go ahead and stick a couple pads of butter in there, and I'm going to let those potatoes, open top potatoes, get some good smoke flavor on them. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and close this thing down. Uh, I may crank the temp up here. It's like 4 o'clock uh, Central Time. Um, I'm going to guess at 225, this thing's at least going to cook for an hour, at least two hours, if not three. Uh, and I don't know if I want to eat that late. But uh, yeah, besides that, I will give you a shot 
I'll probably give you a shot when we're saucing this thing up, so we'll see you then. Alrighty, we are back. We're about four hours into the cook. I uh, just sauced this thing up. I apologize. Might be kind of hard to see uh, just because of the, uh, the smoke for one and then the potatoes, but uh, yeah. Uh, sauce this thing up. We're at about 165 right now. Probably gonna let this sauce sit on here for about 15 minutes or so, and then uh, I'm gonna bring it in and uh, cut it up. So we will pick back up one more time when it's time to eat. So we'll see you then. Alrighty, so we are back, and here is the meatloaf. Uh, real quick, gonna go over to cook times. Uh, this was a four and a half hour cook. Two hours at 225. Two and a half hours at 250. Uh, brought this up to an internal of about 165 ish. And uh, here is what we got. Um, you know, usually I'll cut this thing right down the middle. You can see I have my brisket knife there. But uh, tonight, I think we'll just go ahead and take some slices out of this meatloaf. And see what we got. And take a look at this piece. Oh yeah, nice smoke ring. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. Oh, that's hot. Nice looking meatloaf. But uh, for those of you who, you know, don't like meatloafs, uh, I would really encourage you to Go ahead and try it on a grill, uh, especially if you have like a pellet grill or like a Weber kettle with like a, you know, slow and sear. Try it on there, you know, low and slow, you know, get some good smoke into this meat. And then instead of ketchup, try the barbecue sauce because the barbecue sauce takes this thing to a whole different level. So now besides that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and eat. You guys and girls have a good night and uh, we will see you next time.